Wednesday at 4 o'clock, and as we come on the air, we're trying to follow developing news in Denver. That's because police have responded near the Sheraton down on the 16th Street Mall. Right now, very few details are known, but Denver police say they're responding to reports of a suspicious item. They're asking everyone to avoid the area. Right now, this is happening in the heart of downtown near the Sheridan on 15th Street and Court Place. We'll keep you posted on that one. Another thing going on today, one of the hottest days of the year up at the top end of the 90s, right up against 100 degrees. Yeah, and all those kids that started school said, really? <laughs> <laughs> really, it was a good pool day. Uh, no confusing that it is still summer here. It's really hot outside. Chris, you said it was coming, and here we go. Mid-August, it's feeling like it. Yeah, it kind of feels like uh, stepping outside into like a hair dryer right now. It's a little bit breezy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's really hot. It's With really no dry. Uh, it is indeed a very hot day for us outside. I can confirm that for you. So I'm sure a lot of you are probably nodding your heads at home, getting a little bit of a light breeze right now that does feel pretty nice. But today, our hottest day so far this year here in Denver, we got up to 99 degrees. And by the way, right now it's 98. So there's a chance we get to 100. We've not hit 100 so far this year. If we get to 100, it would be our 106th time on record that we've hit 100 degrees in Denver. Those records go back about 150 years. Long story short, it's not that common that we get to 100 or above, but our 99 degree high temperature today, one degree shy of our daily record. That said, we do have some showers and storms around, including this here into the San Juans of southwestern Colorado. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm gonna have to send things back over to you. Caught some bad bad air or a bug or who knows what. Well, he's Outside. out there, it's 100 degrees almost anyway, <laughs> yeah. but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get, get back, back to Chris, Chris once he clears his throat up and we'll have more on a very hot day here in Denver. Also at four o'clock, an FBI operation rescued dozens of victims of human trafficking. Nationwide last month, the FBI found 200 victims, including about two dozen in Colorado. Nine News' Aaron Adelson spoke with people who worked on the operation who say the crime is different than how people imagine. Our kids are being trafficked right here in our backyards. Here are the stats. Over two days in July, FBI Denver recovered eight kids and 19 adult victims of sex trafficking. And this problem is here. It surpasses all demographics. Um, it is across the board, and so it is something that parents um, should have on their radar. They call it Operation Cross Country 13, which also located 14 children and resulted in five arrests. Mark McCulloch, the FBI Denver special agent in charge, says the crime doesn't happen like people think. And there's a misperception, I think, in the, in the community that these are victims that were abducted off the street. Instead of a snatching, he says victims come from vulnerable situations, like a child who is homeless or has abusive parents. A Denver police lieutenant says traffickers look for these kids to exploit. The traffickers often find that providing drugs, food, and shelter is a successful means to manipulating their victims. Once in their grasp, Lieutenant Aaron Rebertorano says traffickers try to find ways to hold on to the victims. And then offer them to other individuals, associates, for sexual acts. He says many of the traffickers are lower level drug dealers or gang members. That have figured out that selling a human being for sex acts is more lucrative than selling narcotics. The FBI would not give names or share details of the five people arrested. But additionally, a spokesperson says agents and local law enforcement are continuing to investigate eight other suspects. It really is a marathon. It isn't a sprint when it comes to these cases. In Denver, Aaron Adelson, 9 News. And we are working to track down the specifics of the arrests. More than 40 agencies participated in the operation. Denver police tell us their officers did not make any of the five arrests. Today, the family of a pregnant woman who was shot and killed by an Arvada police officer filed a lawsuit against the five officers that they say played a role in her death. It was August 17th of 2021. Arvada police responding to the Target store in Kipling after reports of a woman with a knife was shoplifting. Well, they came across Destiny Thompson, who was not the woman they were looking for. Police approached her minivan and tried to question her. When she tried to drive away, an officer opened fire, shooting and killing Thompson and her unborn son. The first judicial district attorney ruled that the officers were justified in shooting at Thompson's van. But lawyers for Thompson's family disagree. We'll have much more on this lawsuit coming up on 9 News at 5 o'clock. Right now, more and more West Nile cases are being reported in Colorado. Health officials in Broomfield confirmed a human case this week. They say it was found in surrounding counties as well. Broomfield said the person is recovering in the hospital. 
The first horse with West Nile virus here in Colorado was euthanized late last month. You know, since then, 10 more horses have been diagnosed. Three of them are now dead. Nine News reporter Delisa Irizarry has more on what one horse rescue in Weld County is doing to try to keep their herd safe. Is it 84? That's it. <laughs> Under a cloudless sky, it's hard to escape anything. I really don't like the summer. Add manure into the mix. Yeah. It's impossible to get away. The flies are really bad this year, but the wasps have not been as bad. Like no. last year, they were terrible. Emerald works at Allegiance Horse Rescue. Libby in particular loves your camera. A place for animal lovers and those tolerable to things with wings. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely been a, a crazy one. Gloria Timmons runs the place. She knows all about the flies that come with horses in hot summer days and the mosquitoes that make their way at night. It's almost like maybe 30 to 60 minutes after dusk when it's really getting dark is when I notice them the most. Mosquitoes have been top of mind for those with horses this summer. 11 have been diagnosed with West Nile virus in Colorado so far. Four of them have either died or were euthanized. Yeah, I, I have never luckily had a case um, here or in any of the other horse places I've been where the horses passed away from that, and it's, it's scary. Timmon says her horses are vaccinated for West Nile every spring. They also use bug spray and fly masks to try and deter any bites. But it's the constant cleanup and care that really helps and shows. All right, girly. There's no escaping. What did you do? Their love for these animals. Jalisa Rosari, 9 News. They're beautiful. It's hard work as well. And while there is a West Nile vaccination for horses, there is not one for humans. The Colorado Department of Public Health Environment says so far there have been 36 human cases in the state, including one death. The rocky rollout for Colorado's universal preschool program continues. Yeah, today, two Catholic preschools and the Archdiocese of Denver filed a lawsuit against the state. The lawsuit says that Catholic preschools were banned from taking part in the state's universal pre-K program due to their religious beliefs. The schools would prioritize Catholic students for enrollment. They're asking a federal court to ensure that they can get funding just like every other secular preschool. An attorney for the schools told us they believe universal should mean universal and that past Supreme Court rulings back up their claims. What the Supreme Court has said is, is that Colorado didn't have to create this universal preschool funding program. But by creating this program and agreeing to fund all kinds of schools, including some other religious schools, lots of secular private schools, what it can't do is discriminate on the basis of religion. The filing does state that those schools factor in sexual orientation and gender identity when accepting families. That would violate the state's anti-discrimination requirements. We've reached out to the governor's office about the lawsuit. They told us they can't or won't comment on pending litigation. And new this afternoon, the Denver Classroom Teachers Association says it supports the investigation into what happened inside a room at McAuliffe International Middle School. Denver Police is investigating. The school board received complaints that the school was locking up students of color. In a statement, DCTA President Rob Gould said, anytime a student's safety is potentially at risk, it is imperative that we treat these concerns with the utmost seriousness, ensuring a comprehensive investigation and proper due process for all of the involved parties. That is why we support the investigation into the incidents at McAuliffe International. The president went on to say the situation is a much larger district-wide issue, calling for a, more support for the students with specific needs. The district fired McAuliffe's principal, Kurt Dennis, after he shared school security concerns with Nine News earlier this year. Interim principal Micah Claver is now on leave because of that investigation. Well, an enshrinement of Mike Shanahan into the Pro Football Hall of Fame will have to wait at least another year. A committee with the Hall chose Buddy Parker instead today. Parker won two NFL championships with the Detroit Lions in the early 1950s. He'll now be placed in nomination. That likely will just be a formality. Of course, Mike Shanahan was one of the 12 coaches and contributors being considered, along with Dan Reeves. Shanahan told our Mike List today, it's an honor to be nominated for the NFL Hall of Fame and be part of the final selection. Shanahan graciously added, I would like to congratulate the family and friends of Buddy Parker. Mike Kliss is going to join us in just a bit with more on the Broncos.